Welcome to Surf Fishing 101, and today we're going to look at daughters, one of the most productive lures in the Northeast. They say when you come to Montauk that there should be a sign, if you don't have a yellow daughter, go home. It's a kind of an exaggeration, but a yellow Super Strike daughter probably catches more fish in Montauk than any other lure. Uh, I'm not going to say all lures combined because the needlefish catch ton of lures and bucktails can be deadly. But when it comes to Montauk, this lure really shines. And why? It's because it's designed for the current. Um, if you take this lure in your backwater area with no current, you're going to say, what's the hype all about? But if you put this lure in a sweep or a good current, um, you'll see it zigzag. And it's a great imitation of a large bait. It casts well. It's primarily used around inlets where you have a lot of current, on the sandy beaches where you have a sweep, even driven by the wind or a storm. And a place like Montauk Point or, you know, canal or any place where there's current, this is a lure that should be in your bag. They range from little tiny ones, with, which we don't see made anymore, you know, to a standard uh, wood ones, plastic ones. You got big tactical angler. Um, when a fish are keyed on a really big bait, um, some of the custom made lures over the years, this weighs almost four ounces. Um, some of the smaller ones in wood, also wider profile, this is big wallies. Uh, so there's all different types. Obviously the Super Strike is the, the most uh, popular one. Modifications for the most part, I like a single hook on the back. Usually you'll put the split ring on the back so what happens on a cast the hook will fold against the body give you a little casting uh, a little more casting distance you can add a four row up in the front uh, that will dig a little better in the rough water or you can just use a different type of daughter if you're trying to accomplish a specific thing um, great lures a lot of big fish caught on them um, and we got a guy who um, made him popular Donnie Musso to tell you what his feelings are, how to work them, and basically everything you wanted to know about fishing a daughter. Okay, my name is Don Musso, and I make the daughter. My son took over the business. Here's a daughter, typical daughter with two hooks. Uh, I only fish this here in cross currents. I don't like fishing it up in the surf when you got big waves coming at you because what happens is the, the small lip doesn't dig in and the wave will pick it up and just keep bringing it forward and if you crank, crank like anything to bring it in, what's going to happen is you'll lose it and you're already into the surf. Uh, if you fish Montauk, north side, cross currents, even over here off the jetties, it's great. You fish it the opposite way, the current's rolling, so she'll dig in and she takes. This plug probably to take more big fish than any of the plugs right now. It's a great caster, and it ends up, got the big hooks, it holds on to fish. We put on 3 o hooks. We, what I recommend is putting on two 4 rows. You're going to pick up about another 20 feet in your cast. Uh, I normally don't put the bucktail tail single hook on the back. Only I do this on a herring blue when the snap is around, and that seems to be a very dynamite plug when snap is around. It's a herring blue, and like I said, uh, I will put the white hairs on the back end of that. Retrieving on this plug as soon as it hits the water, I don't like a lot of guys crank it real fast to turn around and dig it in. I don't like doing that. I just turn around and, and pick the line up Get it on as it's hitting the water, make a couple turns as soon as you feel it, give it a couple little twitches of the rod, and then slow retrieve. Uh, if you want as it's coming in after a few casts on a steady retrieve, nothing's happening, what I do is I give it a couple quick jigs. And there's times I'll, when it hits the water, I'll work it almost like a pencil popper for the first few feet to make a lot of splashing. So fish that are 50, 60 feet away, they hear the splashing and they'll come to investigate what the noise is. That, that's basically how I work the plug. I do something with the finger, I drop the finger on the line, so as I'm retrieving it, my, the line bounces off the finger, and that gives that plug just that little twitch. 
Well, if you got out, let's say the current is going from the left to the right. Most guys cast up current and get that. Uh, Eric Simmons and I were fishing over there at uh, the rocks over in Shagwan, and it ended up, he says, what you're doing is you're wasting a lot of, which is the truth, you're wasting a lot of time. You're casting up current, and by the time the plug swings around and really starts to work, it's dead in front of you or it's a little bit to the right. So I'd rather cast straight out and then it, the plug is already starting to work within a few feet. So that, that's the difference. If, if you have a million guys there and they're all casting to the left for, in the begin with, yes, you can't do that. But when you're by yourself or there's only a few guys, buddies that you're fishing with, that's the way. Because most of your hits are not when you cast it all the way over to the left on an angle. Let's say you're casting at 11 o'clock. That's not the thing to do. You're better off casting at 12 o'clock or casting at 1 o'clock and the plug starts to swing right away and work. In rough water, it's, it, uh, dar is really effective as well, but the key is that you got you to keep contact with the plug. So if a wave hits it, you got to real fast to catch up to the plug. Sometimes you're only fishing 15, 20 feet of water. You know, you're casting out, let's say, uh, 100 feet or so, but you're only really fishing 15 feet of water because the only time you're really fishing it is when you have contact with it. And that goes with any plug, really. Um, but when the water's really big, say, I mean, a darter's probably good up to like, uh, I don't know, two to four foot sets maybe coming in. When you get like the five, the six, seven, you know, I'm not throwing a daughter, I'm throwing something bigger like a bottle plug, three ounce bottle plug, bottle daughter, bucktails, you know, loaded needle fish, stuff like that. Stuff that's just gonna hold the water better than a daughter. Daughter doesn't really hold super big water that well. Holds current very well, but even in super big current, I'll probably go over to like a bottle plug or something like that. So this is the Super Strike daughter. It's a two and three eighths ounce. It's uh, very effective in the daytime and nighttime. A lot of guys, they won't use it during the day because there's this myth that uh, you can't use it during the day. Another myth is that you need current to use it. You don't need current and you don't need uh, darkness. It's good anytime, morning, day, night, soft water, good current. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different retrieves on how to use it. So the key with any plug is you want to get contact. So I'm going to reel in the slack and I got contact right away. Lock the rod between my legs. My hand, my, it's, the rod is resting on my hand, it's all in the tip. In the daytime, I usually like a faster retrieve with a lot of, lot of short taps. Because when a striped bass hits it, he's hitting it by sight. And in the daytime, you can go faster because they can follow it. So I get my contact. And see how hard I'm hitting that? Boom, boom. I mean, you can really screw with it, you know, boom, boom. Slow it down, speed it up. You know, you wouldn't necessarily do this at night. And this, and what the daughter's doing, it's zigging and zagging. I guess it's actually called a zigzag because it's going boom, boom, boom. It's almost like an underwater spook. You know, it's a really effective during the day if you use it like that. Sometimes it will come, you can even come, get it coming out of the water and it'll pop on the surface and dive back down. Another great technique which most guys use, especially in the dark, is you want to get contact. Once again, it's in between my legs, rods resting on my fingertips. Get your contact, and it's just a very slow roll. That's better if you have current. This is like a, a current retrieve, you know. All it is is a slow roll, and you keep contact with it. If you got a current moving left or right, you're just going to follow it. Follow it with your rod. Follow the plug with your rod if it's moving left or right. Your rod wants to, you want the tip of your rod to be wherever the plug is. If your plug's over here and your rod's over here and you gotta set the hook, you're most likely gonna miss the fish. You wanna be, you wanna get that feel. And a lot of, a lot of guys say, well, how do you feel the daughter? I can't feel the daughter. It's a very hard feel. It is a very hard feel. You have to get used to it. You have to use it. You have to work it a lot. You know, it's not something I take out people and they can't feel it. And it's not something I can teach. It's just something that you have to do over and over again until you get the feel of it. So a nice slow roll with this is nice um, during when you have current. Or when I get a bright night, here's how I like to, here's how I like to work the darter on a bright night. Say I don't have current or very little current and I'm on a bright night. Get my contact right away and it's a slightly faster retrieve with uh, with taps of the rod tip. If it's a dark night, I'll go a lot slower. 
You know, dark night, I'll go that slow, bright night, a little faster. Now, on bright nights, they can follow the fish. You know, if people say, oh, you got to go slow all the time at night, it's not true. Mix up your, mix up your, uh, mix up your retrieve speeds, mix up your retrieves. You can do so much with a darter, it's, it's just crazy.